Shalom Aleicha. I'm walking down uh, a modern path here at Tel Bethsaida. Actually, in Hebrew, it's Bet Sion, the house of fishing. And here we are in the Sea of Galilee. Wanted to bring you here because, again, this is part two. This is part two of what does it mean to be a disciple? A disciple in the days of the Second Temple. How did the Jewish people understand that? How did the rabbis understand that? So, for instance, at Abel Melo, Mehola, Mehola, not far from here, perhaps, oh, so let's say 30, 40 miles down the Jordan Valley, uh, south of us here, we're just north of the Sea of Galilee, we talked about how the rabbis looked upon the Elisha Elijah story, and they said that was the first, you might say, Rabbi Talmud model in itself. So we come here. And we read in the Bible over and over again that Jesus is called a rabbi. So when he's called a rabbi, and again, uh, what that means is my master, it does not mean teacher. Teacher has a different word. But when you're called rabbi, okay, that means my master. And the implication was that a Torah teacher like Jesus or a Torah teacher like uh, Akiva, a Torah teacher like Gamliel, Hillel, Shammai, they would be called rabbi, my master, because they're masters of the Torah. So at any rate, Jesus is going to be picking disciples. And we know that a little bit later on, uh, if I recall, I think there's one Bible story where it says that he goes to pray. And overnight, I think he goes to pray at the mountain, and the next day he picks his 12. But in the meantime, there's a developmental process going on before that happens. And one of the things is, obviously, is meeting Peter and John and Andrew and James and Matthew, all in this specific area. I'm bringing you to Bethsaida only for the simple reason that there are definitely, we can say definitely, no doubt about it, three of the disciples come from here. Peter, Andrew, and Philip. Let me get to that. I'm in John chapter 1, starting in verse 43, and it says, The next day, meaning the next day for Jesus, he purposed to go to the Galilee, and he found Philip. And Jesus said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from... Bethsion, Bethsaida, here, the house of fishing. Now Philip was from Bethsaida of the city of Andrew and Peter. So there we definitely have those three. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Joseph of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see, etc. So indeed we have three of his Talmudim. And as I mentioned at Abel Meloha, the Hebrew word for a disciple is Talmud, and the plural is Talmudim. So he picks three of them from here, Peter, Andrew, Philip, and in the 4th century of the Common Era, the 4th century AD, there's also evidence to suggest that John and his brother James of, who, uh, of the Zebedee, the son of Zebedee, were also from Bethsaida. So now we have five of his disciples, five out of 12, that were from here. And we ask ourselves, what's special about this place? This is just a fishing village. This is not, this is not Tiberias. This is not Jerusalem. Um, this is not, a, this is not Beth, Beth, uh, Beth Shon which was in Jesus' day named Sictopolis, where they have Greek university, theater, um, culture, sophistication, learning. He doesn't pick anybody from there, but he picks them here. Common people, or fishermen of all things, to actually come and follow him. And I think there's a faith lesson here. And I think that faith lesson is basically saying to us, when Jesus says, go make disciples, so... Those Talmudim of Yeshua went out to make disciples. As they make disciples, they make more disciples. And they keep on telling him, you now are a disciple, now you go make disciples. Let's teach you how. So what's fascinating to me, ladies and gentlemen, is that those of us that would call ourselves followers of Rabbi Yeshua, those of us that would call ourselves Christians and say that Jesus is Lord, Savior, Messiah, and God, somebody had to come to us. Somebody had to come to us and tell us about him 
And then once we have become part of that, the second thing also is we learn of him and then we learn that Jesus says the three go statements. Go make disciples, go preach the gospel, and go bear fruit that your fruit would remain. That's the Great Commission. It's not just one statement, it's three. It's huge. It's common folks. And here is the faith lesson for ourselves. He's calling us. Whether you're a housewife, whether you're a young lady who's a junior in high school, um, whether you're a lacrosse player, a soccer player, a football player, a hockey player, a chess player, a cribbage player, it doesn't make any difference. Anybody. He's calling common folk from common places, not from great universities, not from great cultural centers. And he's basically saying, you can be my disciples. So that's the story of Bethsaida. That's the story of this place. I would invite you again to go to the extras section on this video. You can learn more about Bethsaida, learn more about, indeed, uh, more of the things that are linked specifically to this area. Just for instance, this city has been here since the Iron Age and perhaps even the, uh, the Bronze Age. I was just talking with Dr. Gale, and I think is from Virginia University. He's the, one of the head archaeologists here, and they believe that this city was back even in Abraham's day. So there's a fascinating piece. It was wonderful to actually uh, have a lecture by Dr. Gale here um, and to learn more about this. So we'll try to give you some of those resources. Another resource I want to highly uh, recommend, and I'll mention it a couple times in this series, is Ray Vanderland's video series, where he takes these sites and goes to them in depth about becoming a disciple. And so indeed, I thank Ray Vanderland for being my teacher and showing me these things and for me to have the chance, and bless all of you that have donated to this project with Light of Menorah, to take these short videos, to give those to you, and then to provide other links and other places you go to learn more about this. So indeed, when you talk about, can I be a disciple of Yeshua? Can I really be everything that he's meant? Yes, you can. He's picked common, ordinary people here at Bethsaida. So even though we're common, even though we're ordinary, we can be his disciples to go follow him. I'm going to go back and take a look at the insula. We'll talk about the insula concept here in just a second. Shalom.